Hello, everyone. I'm Carrie with Marketing Profs, and we are joined by Steve Garfield of stevegarfield.com, the original video blogger. And you can probably tell he's been in the game a long time because his setup looks so good. Steve, what's going on there? Thank you, Carrie. I'm in the witness protection program right now. Yeah, I can sort of tell. Like, what did you do before that your video setup and knowledge is so clearly on display? <laughs> Well, it's taken me years to figure out how to do video at this high quality. But seriously, folks, do not do this. Don't do this. I mean, even yesterday I was in a Zoom call and people were sitting in front of their window. It doesn't work. You can see why it doesn't work, but I can explain why. These webcams aren't that smart. They use auto exposure. And what they're seeing is all this light and they're exposing for that, and you can't see the person's face. So what you need to do is add light. I'm gonna go add some light, hang on. Okay, we'll just wait here. One of the great things about live video is that people experience it with you. So while I'm waiting for Steve to sort out his setup, you get to wait with me. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I added just the ceiling light. Actually, that's a little bit better. And Me, now, that's debatable, but. <laughs> I have a big LED light. And okay, you know, looking that, better, better. Look yeah. marginally. You know, one thing would, that would make this even better would be to get away from the window. But another thing that would be better is if you don't leave your laptop, let's say, on your desk and look down at it. It's the worst. Bring the camera, put it on, get a bunch of books, and raise the camera up to eye level or a little bit more, and that will make you. Kind of, it, it makes it like you're having eye contact with the people you're talking to. So that's a good idea. So now I'm going to move you. Let's go. I feel like we'd be remiss if we didn't address the fact that you sound like you're yelling at me from the bottom of an empty swimming pool. Oh, yeah. Pool. We, didn't, we didn't hit do audio well yet. <laughs> but okay. I just want to point out to people that we are aware that it's bad. And that's yeah, we know that it's bad. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is, this is much better. And now... Um, at my microphone should be better. This is a little bright. <laughs> down a little, and here we are. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now we have this main light over here. We have a ceiling light, and I'm going to add over here my desk lamp. Oh, fill light. See, this is no fill light. Okay. Oh, carry. And then I'm going to add. A little fill light, so that's good. So we're almost there. Now we have two lights on me. I'll okay. show you. Oh, there is it. That's my LED light. Okay. Looks good. And then there's just a desk light with <laughs> an LED bulb in it. Nice. And then a backlight. See all those books and stuff? I do. You lit them for us? Well, now I am. Oh. I have a light back here. That oh, like at bars where they light the premium spirits, so you buy the good stuff. <laughs> exactly. So you light <laughs> that up, and that's almost perfect. But the book. Where's case... your book? Oh, your book should be on display. Uh, here it is, right here. Okay. But the bookcase looks like it's growing out of my head, so I think I want to move. I want to be now rated. We're, really we're getting well. to the point now where, like, you'd be a solid B plus if you just did like the basics. But now we're getting right. to the point where you can get into the range. I want to get a 10 now. out of 10 on Room Raider. <laughs> Roomraider.com. Well, no, it's rate my, rate room. my Skype room okay. on Twitter. Hey, they stop rate stop trying rooms. to make Skype happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> well, they rate okay. uh, Zoom rooms now. Now you sound better. So what did you change oh, yeah. about the sounds? Well, now I have a uh, Audio okay. Technica mic here. <laughs> For those exactly. joining us and wondering what's going on, Steve Garfield is the original video blogger and he's made video content for years, starting with the Carol and Steve show on YouTube. You've seen him around. He knows a lot about setups. So we're talking about his setup and how you can make better video from home. That's going right. great so far. <laughs> that was a quick, quick tutorial on, you know, everything on how to make it better. Do you think, I mean, this looks a hundred times better than sitting in front good. of a window, right? We have a special guest in the wings waiting who's been doing a lot of live video for years. Chris Brogan has told people for years, do live video, stop saying you're too old, too fat, too ugly, or whatever. I would imagine that stop saying you have a bad setup is on that list too, but I'm happy that you know we all get to improve our setups. So welcome, Chris. 
Thank you. And I still mm -hmm. recommend Steve Garfield's <laughs> book, Get Seen, uh, as the book for this, because, you know, despite, you know, the few mm -hmm. services that have gone in and out, like everybody's book, I just edited my book from 10 years ago, and we talked about 87 things that no longer exist. None of that matters. The stuff that makes Steve who he is and who he's been for so many years and all the kinds of people he's had, that's the part you need the book for. And first time I actually went to the set of the, the Carol and Steve show, I was so blown away that I tell everybody I can that, you know, we never could do this before. I, I've never been to the Happy Days set. So what a world we're in. <laughs> you were starstruck. Amazing. The Carol and Steve show. So basically, I started video blogging in on January 1st, 2004. And there was really no video blogging. Um, for me, I was doing blogging on my text blog on Blogger, and I was doing video. I did public access, and I learned how to do all the camera editing and lighting. But I thought on January 1st, 2004, I want to do a New Year's resolution. And I thought, why hasn't anyone made it as easy to put video online as they have to put text online? So I went to TypePad, and I made a new blog and I called it Steve Garfield's video blog and I figured out how to merge video into a blog and then from that post I made a little post and I said 2004 is going to be the year of the video <laughs> blog <laughs> took 16 years but um here we are so then on the blog I would just share what I learned every every time I posted I would say well this is what I learned about lighting this is what I learned about video and that's what I've done to this day. And then on January 1st of 2005, the New Year's resolution, like Chris alludes to, is let's do a show every week and we'll call it the Steve and Carol show. And Carol says, how about we call it the Carol and Steve show? <laughs> oh, Chris, that's how that got named. See, there would have been a bigger discussion about that at my house because it'd be like, well, if I'm doing all the editing and all the parts of it that aren't fun, <laughs> I think I'm on top of that one. But you're much more gracious than I am. So that's good. Yeah. So that's what we did. So we did 52 episodes of that once a week. And we just, it was, it was kind of like a show, but it was really video of what we did on the weekend. And I would edit it into a little video and, and post it. And so you had, had to do interesting stuff on the weekend then though. We, yeah, we <laughs> did. We had to do something interesting every weekend. <laughs> yeah. So we figured it out and it Pretty was fun. Pretty show. But you kind of gloss over this part all the time where you're like, and I started putting it on the website. And it's like, yeah, but that was not easy at the time. That took some chops. Like you had to do some coding and stuff. Like if yeah. it was easy, a lot more people would have done it. Well, that's exactly right. Because it was like a year before YouTube. So you had to um, sign up for your own hosting site. And this is everything I had to figure out. How to move the video. Well, get it off of the camera. How to edit it. How to put it up on the hosting site and then how to embed it on the web page so people could see it. And then back in those days, we were charged money <laughs> per gig per meg of how much downloads there were. So we were afraid that the videos might become too popular because it would cost us money. Chris, in all of your years telling people they have to do video, was that ever an issue? Like, hey, it's going to cost you because you got to download all these big video files. I mean, I think when you've been telling people to do it, it's since oh, then, Carol. it's actually been pretty easy. Carol wants to say I hi. I started. Oh, yay, oh, Carol sorry, from the Carol and Steve show. Hello. Hey. How are you? Hello. Good to see you. So good. It's so good to see you, too. Carol did not want to come on, everyone. I just want to let you know that, you know. She's okay. My she likes considerable influence. On to get Carol from the Carol and Steve show because I do not have B-listers on this show. I wanted the top billing from Carol and Steve on my show. Nice. So now we've had it. <laughs> and Carol. thank you very much, Carol. Okay, back to, back to teaching. <laughs> wow. So Chris, when you've been encouraging people to do video, I feel like since then you started encouraging people when it was relatively easy. Like I don't know if encouraging people when Steve was doing it would have even worked because they'd be like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Steve and I, I started doing podcasting in 05. Um, I started blogging in 98, which is, I think Steve's like the only guy I can point to that's blogged a little bit earlier than me still, uh, back when it was all HTML. And when Steve started figuring out internet video, like he said, it's before YouTube, um, there was a time that we were all kind of maligning YouTube too. YouTube was a very different kind of creature. It's almost the way we talk about TikTokers who are probably that to some other group at some point, right? 
but um, we, I liked really well produced independent video shows and I would watch Steve Garfield find these and, and bring me like, you know, Ravi Jane with car talk and all these really exciting shows. And I wanted that, but I just felt like no one was going to make anything like that. And so now that everyone has a smartphone and that's not even a question anymore, now that everyone can get a, a free upload platform somewhere, it's a lot easier to convince people to make that. But the emotional side of that still to this day is a challenge. It is still a question of if people are going to worry that they're too something to push the record button, I think. A lot more people seem to be doing it these days. I mean, how do you guys feel about the, this incredible resurgence of interest in video? It's like it's the same thing happening all over again. It's it's so funny. Chris talks about it where the late, all the late night shows had to all of a sudden do video from their homes and they're all figuring out. That's why I'm teaching these things over and over and over again, how to do lighting, how to do sound, where to put the camera. And there are always people that still need to learn how to do it. But how did they not know? Like, how did Jimmy Fallon not know? Or how did the entire cast of SNL not know how to Zoom properly? I don't know. I think maybe they had in their mind they wanted to have it look homemade. Like, they didn't want to make it look like they brought their production into their home. They were kind of like, well, let's make it look like I'm um, like everybody else. Let's not make it look too perfect. Chris, do you think that might be true? That might be true. And I also, on the other hand... Um, it gets really easy to get really kind of laissez-faire about what it takes to put the stuff together. And I think that it's, it's so super easy to go from just having to be the talent to being the talent switching buttons. Uh, I re recently interviewed Amber MacArthur, who's uh, kind of a, a, a contemporary of Steve's and mine, who started in mainstream broadcasting, who married a mainstream broadcaster and who her husband sits there and flips all the switches and we were talking about what it was like when you had to do it yourself. And she said, yeah, I, I haven't done that in a little while. And she can totally do it. But it's 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 a world better when you have a Chris in the production studio instead of this idiot Chris pushing all the buttons and talking. <laughs> really, right? That's like the Instagram husband where you're looking at all these amazingly sort of staged and produced photos of someone. And they're like, I'm just having my coffee. And you're like looking off a balcony or something. And you're like, who is taking that? And what scaffolding are they sitting on? I mean, I'm everything just filling in here. these uh, boards to protect this business, um, and then I'm going to jump back into my Bentley and drive home. <laughs> <laughs> right, but so it's it's obviously easier when you have help. But I also still think that SNL and Jimmy Fallon and that people tuning in to watch shows like that have some expectation that the sound is going to be really good. Oh, it has that to it's be going to look really good. And the second it isn't, they're like, oh, this isn't what I kind of signed up for. And it's caused us to look closer at the content and realize it's not sometimes all that great. <laughs> it's, you know, passable, but it's like the production value around it and all the celebrity guests that usually come on are what makes it seem great. Right. So it's like I a dazzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and some of the interviews are a little long these days versus, you know, the multiple interviewees and they're really short. It's like, uh, so after this 15 minutes, we'll be back with the same guest again for 15 more minutes. I'm thinking, <laughs> I think that, I'm glad I'm watching this on demand because I can fast forward 15 real quick. I kind of love I wanna, the same you're doing with multiple people, though. I want to okay. jump in and ask that question um, because... That's something I was just thinking about yesterday was walking back from the grocery store. I was thinking about the fact that, hmm, I've, I've kind of nailed some new elements into my own video show. I'm curious, Steve, you know, those like eight minute clips. I mean, you came from that space. You came from where the clock was life. Do you think there's a lot more value in trying to get some really nice atomized content like that? Or what's your take on that? Um. I mean, you know, we so then you would have your clips to put on all your other social media. If it we like if you had a good tight eight or ten minutes, but then you know, our friend Joseph Jaffe, he has his show, Corona TV, and he has guests on there for 30, 40, 50 minutes, but then he'll he'll spend some time after and edit out the highlights and do a highlight reel. So it depends on what your audience is doing. Like I'll watch your show or uh, Laura Gassner Odding, you know, at the same time, you know, every every day at 10, but I'll do it on my walk and I'll bring my phone. And so a good 40, 50 minute show is great timing for my, for me on that walk. And so I, I, 
I like it. If the guest is engaging and the content is something I'm interested in, and they usually are, I think, you know, the 40 minutes is fine. And what we used to say when someone asked us, how long should my show be? Well, you know, as long as it you want it to be, as long as it's interesting, you know, don't fit it to a certain thing. But then if you want to have little clips that you want to share on Twitter, Instagram, you, you can do that too. I feel like you have to minimize editing for yourself in those scenarios, especially it's not like Jimmy Fallon's going to sit home and edit his stuff. So he'd be like shipping it all off to someone whose job it is to make this whole thing sound better, look better and cut it to something interesting. But if you're doing all that yourself, like I'm very conscious of that. Like I need, I'm going to let you talk for one to two whole minutes just so I don't have to cut anything up. I'll be like, yay, it sounds perfect. Yeah, you Except may- for the first part of this. You, oh, thank you very much. But I don't, I don't think you would edit any of this, really, right? You just hit save and you're done. That's what, that's the way I produce I my content do. now. That's what I love about live. So before this, when I would record interviews with people on audio, or we would do it privately, and then I'd edit it later, I was much more particular about it, about fixing things. And now I'm like, it is what it is. So. You know, you're here in the moment live or you watch it later, you're seeing the same thing versus there's been times when I do audio interviews and I really do major surgery on it. Not possible with video, by the way, because you'd see all the jump cuts to make people sound their best. So there's good things about it and then there's bad things about it. But it seems like right now people want the live experience. They just want to see you kind of warts and all. It's like because they're sitting at home feeling a little bit less than you know, like we all are, that we've been shut in. We have my skin is paler than it's probably ever been since I was in the womb. And, you know, I can't go to the gym and all this other stuff. And I think everybody just kind of wants to feel like a little solidarity there. So yeah. perfect time to get on video, right? Because we all look awful. I think main, I think mainstream media <laughs> is constricted by their, their time frames and their show formats that they have to make it so uh, short and we have the freedom to keep it long. And you notice that some of the shows now say, go to our website to see the full interview. They never did that before. And I always wanted it. I always wanted to see that, but on broadcast TV, they don't normally do that. So this is, is what I want to see. What do you think about things like, I mean, both of you, like Instagram TV, where you have this little piece that goes into the feed and then you have to go over to Instagram TV and watch the rest of it if you want to. I don't like, Inst- I don't even know where Instagram TV is almost. <laughs> don't I mean, Instagram, I mean, Steve. <laughs> well, yeah, not really because they say, hey, go find me on Instagram and you click the link and you're you're on Instagram and there's a bunch of pictures there. I'm like, where are they? Now I have to look at the top and there's a circle and they're live up there. It, it, the interface, well, why why aren't they, can't they give me a link to their Instagram TV show? Can they? I don't even know. I don't think they can. Right. And it's, it's not right. It's definitely like it is so non-intuitive. It is it is much more an in the moment kind of experience if you ever catch one. But <clears throat> there are some exchanges. I'll give you an example. Raj Law, a friend of mine, tweeted or not tweeted, whatever you do in IG. He made an IG story pointing out that uh, Dave Chappelle, Netflix is a joke, um, was on IG. And so <laughs> I watched... <laughs> I am missing it. What did I miss? I, mean, okay. I, mean, I just took a sip of water and you're making me laugh, which you always do. And I oh, mean, get off my lawn. You know. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm like, there better not be like, you know, asparagus in my teeth. So uh, Dave Chappelle's new show, uh, 846, was on IGTV through Raj Law's link. And it was the first time I ever watched a full show on my phone, which, you know, again, I'm 50. So phone is not my favorite thing to watch a show on. But I watched the whole thing. I, I couldn't take the time to go over and find it on Netflix or find it on YouTube or any of the other places because I started it here and I just didn't want to push stop. And so, you know, there's, if it had a way better nav, it it does have its interesting ways to kind of get you into wanting to watch something that I've never done before. I've never done that. I've never watched a whole show on my phone because I'm 50 and I like big screens cannot lie so I knew that was the first <laughs> you had to do that i was waiting for it perfect thank uh, you yeah thank you, you, just, you can just uh you know chromecast it or wherever apple play it right onto your tv do you ever do, do you ever do that no oh well yeah it never people works do. for me people no do. it doesn't work for you i don't know that i've ever chromecasted instagram though that's a good question I've Apple just mirror on my TV. I did it. I did a show the other day. It was amazing. It was really yeah. good. 
I was like, wow, look at me. I'm watching the internet on my TV. (laughs) It's on TV. (laughs) So funny, Steve. I am the kind of person. I take a picture of my experience and then I share it with the person I'm watching. And I'm like, hey, I just watched you on TV. And they're like, oh, I like this. Retweet. Look at someone's watching me on TV. It's a whole social thing. I like actively resist though switching over to the bigger screen because it once like a million years ago it didn't work. So I will sit here and mess around on my phone with my computer like right there and I just won't open it. I don't know what that mental block is, but I just <laughs> don't do it. So I've watched and for one thing when travel pre-pandemic when travel was more frequent, I would watch entire series on my phone while traveling because trying to open a laptop even a small one on an airplane was a chancy proposition. You know, I'm always behind the one person that wants to sit like all the way back. Oh, so I have please. to worry about my laptop. I doubt that happens a lot to you, Chris, because you're much taller than I am. But people feel like they can just feel free to just let back. And I'm like a reasonable height. I need my space. But I'm like, you know what? Fine. So I just watch it on my phone. But long story short, even with other options available, like the Chromecast, I will still probably consume content on my phone. And I don't know if that's my unique problem or if other people do the same thing. So do you think people should plan their backgrounds with an eye toward, you know, making you like the important things visible on a phone? Oh, backgrounds. Uh, well, um, I just recently read, you only need one copy of your book in your background, <laughs> not like a whole bookshelf of your book. What? So I mean, I, I'd have noticed that on people's bookshelves. It's like too many. So, you know, that that's one thing. That but, makes me um, sad because I'm like, nobody bought their book. <laughs> they have them all still. Um, I think backgrounds, I, I am a critiquer of everything production value. You have to have good audio. Um, you have to have, well, the, the, the sound, when it's a big echoey room, hopefully my room isn't echoey because there's so much stuff in here that it, everything's capturing the echo. But people who are in like a basement room that just echoes, that's not good. Um, People who aren't using an external microphone, that's for broadcast TV or it's not good. Um, And for backgrounds, I think a nice background is important. Um, A blank wall? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was getting personal. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Yeah, no, Chris usually shows more. But also, yeah, we're not getting the full Monty today. (laughs) One thing was um, tilt down. Don't have your show like this. Yeah, this this isn't right, because then you look like you're at the kids table. And it's to me, it's makes me anxious. This is not right. This is a screen capture right here. (laughs) Your little eyes poking up above your too much, too much. It's really, uh, I, I learned everything I know about any of this from Steve Garfield. It is, I look at the tops of everybody's heads every time I hit record now. It's 100% Steve Garfield. Do you? Yeah. Bob Collins joining us in the comments. Well played, Chris. Well played. Like he was saving it. He was saving that nice. background. See, I, I, see, Chris, that's a lot better. <laughs> I gotta sure. look at my Batmans and my Deadpools and my Groots and my Kermit the Frog. There's a whole lot to do here. Well, there's a whole lot you could do to critique our backgrounds, I'm sure. Let me just remove some of the stuff that would be in the way for you to see. And you'll see even better. So check this out. Why don't you slide you over? Yeah, look at nice. Now you can critique us. (laughs) Okay. A hanging guitar on the wall is always excellent. The extra points if you can actually play it. Not not required. (laughs) Oh, oh now you're going to fix it. Then when I put it back, you'll be all blue again. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm just going to keep moving everybody. every time you move. When I move, you move, I think is the experience. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's very good. So that now I think Chris looks balanced. You can see some visual interest behind him and it's not distracting. Yeah, I would I would put something up on the wall over there on the side where it's all just blue. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, just get a hammer and we'll wait. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Something like that. Hang that up. Okay. Nice. And I see you've got Lord Hobo Brewing Company behind you that just had its five year anniversary today. Is that right? Oh, nice. Yep. Five years, Lord. Oh, very good. Very nice. See, I feel well, a little I can't bit. I not anymore. Could you switch something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you ta- not talking anymore? Maybe he muted. I just purpose. decided to be quiet. I'm a mime now. 
<laughs> That's a solid career choice. I feel Any snotty point. all the time when my picture shows in the background because it's a caricature that Steve, you and I actually got caricatures together and a whole bunch of other people were there at South by Southwest one year and they had someone there doing them. Oh, and so I was like, oh, fun. So I like, threw it over there because <laughs> it was not what was visible, used to not be what was visible. And okay. now it's there. And Perfect. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, but now I'm like one of those people that has a picture of themselves, caricature or not. Well, now we know. So in my thing, I know now you know. So now I have to move things around. But uh, yeah, so this is our, our critiques. Any, oh, I any like this. You know what? I like optimization this. tips. <laughs> I like this three way look a little better than the tight shot of the, the three of us. Um, I like that you can change it like that. I'm just learning that you StreamYard, and it's a very good tool for doing this kind of thing. Very I'm easy to learn. Enjoying myself immensely, I must say. I really enjoy this. So thanks for Bob Collins for joining us. He's he's giving us a lot of like fun in the moment commentary. Evidently, he likes the blue, Chris. I don't know if you want to take Bob's opinion over Steve's. That's your call. Um, I would listen Not to while I'm on air. <laughs> well, that can be like a blue screen for you, right? Oh, can you? So virtual backgrounds, where do we stand on those? Um, if I had Either. to throw out an opinion, I'd say no. I don't do them because people, it, it pixelates when people move and I think it's distracting. Like your hair can kind of disappear or move a little bit and it messes up your background. So I just don't do it. I mean, they're not perfect. Um, I know Joseph Jaffe on his show tends to want to do a virtual background to match his guest every week. And that's kind of fun. That's his thing. So it depends on how you use it. Chris, what about you? Virtual background or just the real thing? Um, the uh, My belly about that is no. Um, and I think that one reason is that I feel that people... <sighs> It, it's shenanigans, right? It's 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 the when we got our desktop publishing software and we tried to put about eighty five fonts in every document, and it's a uh, it's like live journal days in the early nineties, and having people like, you know, with the minute you learned how you could march like little ants of color around somebody's name or so that you would do this, and I just feel like hopefully that'll that'll be a, a detail that vanishes over time, but I, I guess also you know to Steve's you know nicer take on it. You know, if it's some, if it becomes someone's shtick, that's a thing. But I guess that's the thing. It has to be like a production decision. A lot of what I do, you know, I base on a decision that I want to be kind of lower tech, a little clunkier. I want to make mistakes because that becomes part of who, who you get to know who I am. And so I think that uh, that choice to want to have that sort of faux background, if you execute it in a funny way or a useful way or something, that might not be so bad, but I also think that's like the carrot top of, you know, video backgrounds. I think it's like a gimmicky kind of video background, like, um, the, uh, Gallagher, the, the watermelon crusher guy. Like it's not to me, it's not the best way to, to make storytelling happen with visuals. Steve agree or disagree. I agree. Gallagher carrot top. <laughs> I do think it's brilliant when you work in mistakes and screw ups being part of your brand, because then when you screw up, you're like, hmm? hey, I'm on brand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, you'll stay on brand. Right? Yeah. My first podcast was fat guy gets fit because I figured if I just never get fit, I can do the show till I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> my first show was a pregnancy podcast because I was like, someday I'll be able to end this with like no <laughs> drama at all. <laughs> just like, oh, pregnancy is over. Bye-bye now. <laughs> so what would be the easiest thing people could do, both of you, to make the videos they're creating now from home or at remote locations a lot better easily? Um, so don't make them shaky. My God, please. Like someone, If you're online and you have to put it in your lap, don't do what Chris is doing because <laughs> it's so annoying. I mean, they don't even <laughs> need, you need to be aware of what it is you're – you're broadcasting, so don't have a shaky camera. One thing I do outside is do uh, record videos with my iPhone, which is really good for recording. I found this really cool tree at the Arnold Arboretum nearby where Carol and I walk, and there's a branch that sticks up kind of like this, and I can put my phone right in it, and it's like a natural tripod, and I put the phone right in there like that, and then hit record, and it's a perfect tripod, and it's um, keeps the camera 
nice and steady. So that's really cool. If if you if you can't find a tree that <laughs> is a nice tripod, you can take the camera iPhone and stick it uh, just hold it against a wall and hold it there and it's going to be steady and it's not going to move. So there's a lot of different ways you could keep your camera steady and you can just use your iPhone to record video. For the audio part of that, be aware of your surroundings. Like today there was this jackhammer going, going, going nearby. So we said, you know what, we'll just record our thing tomorrow. Um, and another thing to know with your phone, where's my phone? Well, I don't have it. But if you, if I had my phone and I was recording, one way you could do is walk around like this with the phone in front of you. But if you're narrating, you're not near the microphone. So what I would do is find out where the microphone is, which is right on the end of this imaginary phone. And I'd hold it here and have the microphone right near my mouth. And then I'd walk around like this and narrate and the audio would go right into your phone. So that's how you could walk around and shoot video things. If you don't want to be on video, you don't have to, you can always just be the videographer and, and film things like that. POV. I One think thing. it's part of being the kinds of idiots that we are that like when <laughs> Steve and I look at our phones to start to do something, we go, where's the mic? Where's the phone? I mean, where's the camera? And so like you kind of set it up to be the right shape and, right. and configuration. Which of my hands is stronger to hold up for a very long period of time? As we saw earlier, some some people can try to take a drink and then they need some help. Ooh. Oh. oh, one thing though, Steve, that you do that cracks me up every time is you make sound effects and it's not even like, you know, you're doing it. Like when you put the tri phone in the tripod in the tree, you were like, it goes like this. Like you made a sound. <laughs> you you right? the yes. <laughs> I was like, watch the replay. I didn't the know sound that. There is. Yeah. There's no that. way that tree makes that sound, but you do. And that's just one of those quirky things. Oh, that you I got do. another thing. This is, I'm, I'm probably doing 50% right on this one, but when you're being interviewed, instead of looking at your computer of the pictures of all the people, what you want to do is look into the lens of the webcam. So while you're talking, you know, yeah, it's more important for me to go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or when I'm talking, I could probably look down a little when you're talking. That's probably fine 50-50. I don't know. I usually like people looking at the lens, but when I'm talking, it's better if I talk and I start talking to you this way because people are looking at me and we have an eye eye connection. If I'm like this and looking and talking at you, it's it it's disconcerting in a way, but it makes a better connection if you if you look at the lens. I've heard Chris say the same thing and you're very good about staying looking at the lens. People could make faces at you and you wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, I would probably I'm going to try that next time. So Steve I was thinking the whole time he was talking, I was just going to go right for the nostril. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't see it. And you wouldn't see it. Hmm. Very interesting. I like where you're going with that, Chris. <laughs> so, you know, if there's a way to do it wrong, I'm ready for it. Well, because that's your brand. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to do it wrong every time and you will like it because I am Chris from ChrisBrogan.com and Steve from SteveGarfield.com. I like that. If you go to Steve at SteveGarfield.com. <laughs> you'll see a little button that says blog. And on there, I've put a couple of posts. One is how to do StreamYard and you know get started with it if you just want to see what it's about. And then the next post is how to do better audio video. And it gives links to the microphone and the lights and the webcam I use. If you want to check it out, it's all over there. That's basically what I do is posts and posts and posts, hundreds and thousands of posts on that blog of how to do things, how to get started in Zoom, how to get started with uh, that new Facebook video room thing that none of us used. Do you guys use that? No. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have one know. friend who used it. One. I haven't. I might have used it that day once with one friend to, and then never again. Is it like Facebook's version of Zoom or something? Yeah. Okay. But good. Now I don't need to use it. Thank you. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Nothing there. All right. So I don't know Steve why. That's weird. I don't I took the the article you're talking about and made a short link for people. So if they want to go to mprofs.com slash Garfield video tips, it'll bring them directly to that post that tells them all the things that they're doing wrong that they can fix right now and they should. So thank you for joining wow, me today. That's amazing. How did you do that? A short link. I called yeah. 1992 and asked them to make one for me. Nice. <laughs> 
Chris and Steve, thank you so much for doing this live with me. This has been so much fun. You've been such good sports and we tore apart your background. Chris, I apologize. Steve was very ungracious about it, but I think you'll thank him ultimately. Just facts. Ultimately. Bing, bang, <laughs> bing, boom, boom. Thank you. Bing, done. Make better video, everyone. It's easy because Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com said so. Good talking to you. Bye. Bing, I'm gone. <laughs>